Well, speaking of Oscar, I think we got an Oscar in Reggie's corner this week. I'm not sure. I've got. Oh, come on. All the cats are talking about this. This cat's. Oh. Whoa. Okay. Oh. Jeez, that came out of nowhere. Well, get out of that rocking chair there, Brian. That cat's got too long a tail. That's what Aunt Lola would say. Um, no, it is Reggie's Corner, ladies and gentlemen, where we recognize in a in a fond way, but hopefully with a little a little mirth making, uh, some of our fine furry feline friends that have have departed and passed. And I've caught up on some of my emails because I felt bad because since you know we've since we've started doing this, so many people have written in with their their stories that I didn't want to be leaving anybody out. So I've tried to go through as many emails as I can here lately. Uh, condolences to Stephen on the passing of his cat, Sheena, who had an accident. She choked on a hair tie that was just accidentally left around. And they rushed her to the vet, but to no avail. So folks, again, especially if you have chewy children, of any kind, two legs, what? four legs, or whatever, chewy children that like to chew on shit, put stuff in their mouth or chew on things. You got to child-proof and pet-proof the house. You can't leave things like that laying around. Hey, we talked about bobcats last week, right? Right. Listen to this. That's a bobcat. I thought that was you when you saw pockets come out on AEW. No, that was me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so no, but Stephen, we're sorry about Sheena. And again, make sure you pick up, folks, anything that may be laying around that the pets could chew on. Uh, grab all the plastic bags from the dry cleaners and uh, put them away where the pets can't get them. Put them in the baby's crib or something like that. Is she um, named after Sheena from Sheena is a punk rocker? Uh, By the no, Ramones? actually, it... it uh, the cat's name was Sheena, but it had a nickname of Kiki. Sheena Kiki, in quotation marks. And then the last name, which I don't want to... Or Sheena Queen of the Jungle? Some of the... Well, it could be Sheena Queen of the Jungle. All right, I'm moving on here, if you'll forgive me here, Mr. Bobcat. Bobcat last. Um, Brad in Nebraska wrote in, today I had to say goodbye to my best friend, my dog Brutus. We've been pals from the day he was born until his last day 15 years later. And the final few days as I went through sleepless nights comforting him, your show comforted me. Oh, was Brad, we're sorry about Brutus. But from the day he was born, that must mean he's a, a family pup and he was born on the premises. So that's even more sentimental. Also, Evan from Massachusetts sent in a picture of his dachshund, his puppy Max, um, who had to had to go away recently. He's had him since he since Evan was twelve years old, but Max the dachshund was fifteen. But he sent a picture of Max eating a McDonald's Happy Meal, the box and everything in in happier times. So he says about Max, he was beloved by hundreds of people and a legend in his own right. I hope to add him to the hall at Reggie's Corner so he may be joined with great company. Evan, we're sorry about Max. Um, Paul from Hamilton, Ontario. And this was, this was so sweet. I write this on my dog Puddles' his final night before he crosses over and finds Tatter, Kia, and Sandy in the place where there are always bunnies to chase and the stakes grow on trees. Puddles is an adoptee and traveled from Georgia, USA, because he's from Canada. Paul is Hamilton, Ontario. He traveled from Georgia, USA, all the way to me in Hamilton, Ontario. He's a mix of German pointer and American bulldog, which is what we call pit bulls because they're banned here. He looks like a slim-nosed white pit bull with spots. Anyway, he'd been the best beast and a great friend for seven years. I'm going to miss him a lot. Paul, we're sorry about puddles. Um, and also Virgil from right here in Louisville uh, had to put his baby girl and his best friend Megan to sleep 
she was a forever foster with heart issues and was the queen the queen of their castle like Stacy well really Harley's the princess of our castle but she was the queen of their castle and uh we're sorry to hear little 14 pound girl anyway and on, I also um let's let's bring it back to a more positive uh animal <laughs> situation what's here. a more positive animal well, because uh, these other positive. animals are depressing the shit out of me. No, no, no. I'm saying a more positive animal situation here. Um, this is from Rylan and Parker. Uh, basically, he says, mine and my son's dog, Parker, was born without the use of one of his back legs, and the other is pretty much for hopping. And through that time I've had him, we've had plenty of struggles with him being anxious and chewing his tail due to the anxiety whenever I had to go to work, and he had to be crated. That was until I started leaving your podcast on YouTube playing for him when I went into work every day. And since doing that, the chewing and anxiety he goes through have all but disappeared. We don't agree with much wrestling-wise. I don't know if he means me and him or him and his dog. But I still appreciate your take and what you've done for my little furball. That's from Rylan and his little furball Parker. So see, we do have soothing voices and bring comfort to the masses. I see. You do see. Right here, I should say. Right here. And and also, and I've got, and you've got a couple of people to recognize, but one more here. R.C. from Oregon, who wrote that, oh, unfortunately, his mother had passed away about a year ago, but uh, it, this was in the middle of over the past couple of years. He's been working on his health, and he has lost almost 200 pounds in two years. So... While it'll be a year towards the end of this month that he's lost his mother and it's been rough, he's still been able to accomplish that. And so he has done worlds for his own health. So, again, R.C. from Gresham, Oregon. Uh, congratulations on your weight loss, and we're sorry to hear about your mom. And I know, Brian, you've got a couple people you want to bring up. Yeah, a few friends of the show, a few friends of Arcadian Vanguard who have recently had some passings in their family, and I just want to say something here on the air, but Scott Cornish, a longtime member of the Arcadian Vanguard family, longtime friend of mine since Smoky Mountain Wrestling Fan Week, his mom just passed away, and I was really sorry to hear about that. Uh. And then someone you and I both know who we correspond with, who I hadn't heard from in a little while, Frank the Collector. And Frank, I'm sorry I haven't called you, but I'm at least I'm going to talk about it here. <laughs> but Frank the Collector, uh, his father just passed away. And again, very, very sorry to hear about that. Frank's a longtime friend of ours and a good guy. And finally, Dale Spear. Once again, a mutual friend of ours. Yes. And uh, his mom just passed away. And very oh. sorry for all three of these guys. Well, and I'm saying I owe Dale at least an email, if not a phone call. But Dale has been a, he's originally from Minnesota and has been a longtime fan since the 60s of the wrestling business and knew everybody and actually um, hooked me up with some of the old Houston wrestling programs that were bound from the Houston op from Paul Bosch's office that ended up with Nick Bockwinkle when Nick owned part of the Houston office. And I have those in my collection now through Dale. And, and I'm sorry to hear about that, Dale. And also... Um, uh, I just heard about Frank, the the collector, his father passing away this morning because as soon as you mentioned it to me, I had gone to the post office box and there was a box from Frank, hadn't heard from him in a while, and his letter explained that, and he sent me, as a memento, his father's VHS machine, an RCA forehead machine. Oh, wow. What looks like. It's got to, I'm thinking the mid to late 80s. You know, I'm pretty good on my VCRs. And Frank said it hadn't been used that much. Let him know if it still worked with a modern television. But it's what he and his father used to watch classic wrestling tapes on when people watch tapes. And he said, I was the only other person besides his dad that he knew that still had and watched VHS tapes. That's why he wanted to send it to me. So Frank, I'm writing you. But I appreciate it. I'll broadcast this. You'll probably hear it quicker, maybe. 